Let me look at my mic settings, That's actually. Fine. Yeah, just, just let us know when you're ready to go, and we're just gonna shoot the shit. Talk about whatever. It's gonna be very laid back. Cause Grandpa here doesn't want to deal with the hard hitting issues of the day. I don't know. I know I don't. <laughs> Hello, everybody! Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, everybody. Brennan here. <laughs> I, I thought you said we were going to say quiet. No, I was oh. gonna, that's where I started with the hello, and then... Oh, God. <laughs> hello! We already started. Hello! Ah. Uh, welcome to a uh, special, special edition? Special holiday episode. Of... Special ho holiday episode of the VGZ cast. Uh, this is like season five now, I think, right? Jeez. Six. Isn't it still uh, the same one last time? It, uh, no, we started. Okay. We, we took we took a long enough break. I think we could break it up into another season. Yeah, this would be six then. All right. Okay, so season six. Wow, Jesus. Season six of the VZ podcast. I hope you all are doing well this evening. This evening, I'm joined with a small crew. But just this. Health team crew. It's just me, and Doctor Chibi, and Mr. Cali. It's me. It's me. It's BBP. VGZ. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. We're going to try something a little bit different. Uh, as opposed to droning on and on about news stories that people may or may not care about, we're going to try to drone on and on about stories that people do care about. So, maybe it'll be fun. <laughs> that's the spirit. That's the spirit. I try, I'm try. i trying to be enthusiastic. Okay. Well, I know. Just, okay, just to clarify, it's less... It's less care and don't care. It's just that um, Brennan specifically pointing at him, just in case this Phil feels horribly. Wow. Uh, wanted That's to ha <laughs> wanted to have less of a machine gun pace to it. Basically, instead of just slamming through every story we can get and only t you know saying a few lines, uh, maybe a few less topics, but a little more in depth. This time Correct. Around. Yeah, but we're gonna keep the stuff that we usually start with, like another uh, mess. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about video games and stuff we've been up to. Uh, uh, I will... They're all terrible. Okay. Well, then let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Callie, let's start with you. Uh, I saw you were at a convention. Yeah. Fair. It it was it was basically more or less a convention. Uh, it was a classic game fest. Uh, it was up in Austin and. Uh, it was it was pretty neat. I don't know. I took Surge up there. The whole reason I went was because I was in a Soul Calibur tournament a while ago, and I oh. like got second place and got a wristband for this was convention. It, was that the one at the school, or was that something else? No, this is no. This was just a thing by itself. Okay. But uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It basically uh, there was a lot of cool stuff there. Uh. Just a like, lot. I saw Surge on some old ass like Commodore style computers. Like, how old does it get? Oh no, all the way back. Uh, all the way back. We Good. there. There are so many people, and Donut will probably uh, vouch for this. There are so many people making old games. Like so many people making games for old systems. Like there were. A, oh yeah. There were a bunch of people making Genesis games there. Yeah. Uh, nice. It's kind of crazy, honestly. Um, like, well, I mean, that that one that like Surge was playing, what one of the ones no. there was a picture of Surge playing was like a homebrew freaking Atari game, which kind of yeah, blew my mind. Uh, but yeah, no, it, and we played a weird volleyball game on Genesis that wasn't done, but it was, it looked like a Genesis game, you know. Uh, just... well, I mean, the production's gone like up for like AAA games, but you know the, the skills and docs and stuff for the old stuff hasn't gone away. It's a great place for people to start or stay if they want. Right, right, yeah. I, it just that whole retro development scene intrigues me. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it was the convention was like half a, a vendor hall, just like. St game stores getting rid of their stuff you know mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. you know a few artists i bought a symmetra print from this one artist that was great 
I will support any yeah, artist drawing some Metro stuff. Okay. Um, good picture. Somebody has to. Yeah. Looks like a good Fraggle picture. Yeah. I that's that's gonna be the second Symmetra picture I have on my wall. Um the the other half of the convention was like uh, again more like weird shit. Like there was there was a thing, it was a bunch of light switches hooked up to a Sonic game. Like and the light switches were all one button on the controller. You know, just there were a few dumb weird controllers like that, like like a giant joystick and uh just crazy bullshit. Uh I I I like that side of, you know, indie development just fucking dumb. Let's make this as dumb as possible. Like that 100 uh the honey button, button game. joystick yeah have you played that i've never i've only seen pictures i i haven't seen it in person but i i know what you're talking about it's because yeah i remember the story about that was like somebody wanted to somebody thought they were being like all artsy and they wanted to deconstruct video games with like like a 10 15 button controller and they wanted to like show like how dumb the whole thing was and whatever but they got all these vgz that's uh, in the vgz fgc guys come up to and go hey this is all mind games this is cool can you put more buttons on it? <laughs> it started caught talking to like the tournament circuit, and that's how I ended up at a hundred. Oh yeah, that's legit a thing. People would just put yeah. false buttons on their sticks. Like that's that's a thing people do. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. It. What was the other one? I said. Oh yeah. Uh. There's one of those pictures on there. Is like somebody just had a giant bazooka light gun to play duck hunt mm-hmm. with. It was real dumb. Uh, and I there was there was a Mario Brothers tournament, and mm. that was like, uh, it was score based. I and I'm like, oh, okay, all it's right, like a wizard style tournament. I guess, yeah. <laughs> that's it was, the that's the Nintendo cha- uh yeah Nintendo World Championships. It it wasn't Super Mario Brothers. It was Mario Brothers the the First the original one. one. Yeah. Um. You mean the arcade game? Yes. Oh. With the turtles okay. and the pipes. And yeah. The one screen lines. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that game. I'm <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's the weakest entry in the Mario world. Yeah. The Mario canon. Okay. It's, it's the weakest Mario canon, yeah. <laughs> uh, I yeah. think I played Wrecking Crew over that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. We can yeah. have a discussion about least favorite Mario game. I'll, I, wouldn't this be a good place for it? <laughs> well, maybe. We can talk about maybe. this later, though. All right. <laughs> Mario Sunshine, continue. <laughs> I said it there. I, I throw a little salt uh, on that. I, look, okay. Look, I don't hate Sunshine. It's no, people okay. argue that Mario. Okay, look. Where it's a bad camera. Apparently? It's a bad camera. Okay, it fucking. It's. It's not a good camera. And that honestly. Hat in Time kind of has the same problem. It's a better controlling game, though. But yeah, like, well, by, here's the thing. I finished Hat people, in Time, and hold on, uh, people will argue that, but they gave Mario all these like cool new abilities. And it's way more mobile, and like, and that's true. But the problem is, they they welded this backpack onto him, and that's the main mechanic for movement and everything. You only get to like use his full range of mo- motion in those mini games, in those special stages, the really awful ones. I mean awful like bad. I mean awful as in they'll they just like wreck you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. So it's yeah, it's like it's great that he has these moves and all, but you're not supposed to use them. You're supposed to be using this other stuff, and that kind of sucks. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, there there was like a whole there there were a whole lot of fucking video games there, and it was just interesting to be like. You know, here's a Tron machine. My my dad had a Tron machine. This is weird. Yeah, that shit's that shit's awesome. I I've actually not played Tron in a uh, in the physical form, in like a cabinet format, unfortunately. Um, and that's one that I definitely would love to play at some point because I actually really like that game, even though it's not like this. It's maybe not the strongest arcade game from that time frame, but it's still pretty awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it's, it is this weird thing where, like, okay, you beat the light cycle, now you have to do the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, the four. Yeah. The four, it's the four different ones, yeah. Yeah. That was neat. That was a neat, like, change around. 
instead yeah. of just being the same like stage over and over and over because i i started playing okay look i had a ti 99a that thing was made the year before i was <laughs> or actually maybe the same year but i came out one year later um it's like i remember gaming i think I, i've never liked point gaming it's never been and that era was all about the point gaming so any game that would bring something else to the table besides just a score i'm down with right yeah well i think it was that was one of the first two that kind of had yeah. that in a way like a lot of games prior to that obviously were stuck on the um high score fest and whereas that is more like explore these different ideas that we had to make a game I think that's a that's an originally an Atari game if I if I'm correct. Probably. It's either Atari or Stern. Midway. Okay, so it was Midway. Midway. Alley Midway. Eighty two. Uh, but it was cool because it, it, it shows the four it shows four different scenes of like the movie basically. Yeah. And that's unique. It was very unique for the time because of that. Um, but also the cabinets there was also the one cool thing is there was like two different cabinets so there was that cabinet which uh Callie and Serge saw at the yeah. uh thing but then there was also another cabinet that was a sit down cabinet um which the sit down cabinets are really freaking rare because as you would imagine they're big and they're like the size of the sit down um, like any sit down cabinet you can think of off the top of your head your uh, Jurassic Parks or what have you like it's a big yeah. cabinet yeah, I don't. I've never even seen that before. I've I've not seen one in the wild, but I definitely have seen. Uh, I've definitely seen pictures of the cabinet. Um, mm. yeah, f I'm trying to find one real quick if I can. It's definitely the less popular. It's definitely the less popular of the mechanic of the cabinets because of the obvious like problems with a, an enclosed cabinet. Yeah, maybe it was Discatron. That that is also a different game. Yes, I know that. Discatron is a completely different game. Discatron is more like a traditional arcade game in nature. They did have a cocktail cabinet. I'm okay. I'm starting to wonder now. What what would you say was the earliest licensed video game? Because Discatron is a licensed video game. It's it's a movie game. It's remembered fondly, but I mean. Did like Indiana Jones predate that? Did ET the um, the wireframe Star Wars? Maybe yeah. Well, I think the uh, the wireframe Star Wars I think might have been seventy nine. Um, I'm I have to look into this now. Eh. If we're talking specifically arcade games, yeah, I mean, didn't that did it most of those predate console? Uh yeah, for the most part. Um, if I had to guess though, I would say. If I yeah, if I had to guess, I would probably say that Star Wars is the was the first one. Uh, let's see if I find anything. Doing the Google lookup, not really finding anything right off the bat. Journey, Journey was eighty three. Journey game is funny. Uh, actually, the Star Wars game came out in eighty. Tron beats it by a year. Oh, neat. Tron actually might be the first one. Uh, anyways, uh, anything else interesting? Video game wise, Callie? Uh, obviously, I'm assuming you've played stuff outside of just going to that. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, after after the convention, there was a quote unquote after party at an arcade called Pinballs. And yes, yeah. saw the uh, Hercules cab, which is insane. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I, I've never seen that. That was so weird. Like, it's just this giant pinball machine that basically uses a ski ball as the ball and, like, Jeez. these giant... Everything's bigger. Yeah. And, like, it doesn't really work <laughs> that well. I don't know. Well, don't they have to, like, keep replacing parts just because the sheer force of everything keeps breaking shit? I, I think the probably. maintenance on I think the maintenance on those yeah. is a lot harder is a lot harder than uh, traditional pinball cabs. But they they had some stuff there. Like I I never thought I would see a Black Knight two thousand cabinet in person. You know. I saw those pictures. That was really neat. And they had Black Knight, Black Knight two thousand, and whatever the new Black Knight game is with a mm -hmm. like video screen and everything. Uh, they had, it was like three different Star Wars cab uh, 
games. There was uh, just a lot of shit. I would not expect a... You know what? I should expect a pinball game for, like, Lost in Space, the 90s movie, you know? Yeah. With Matt LeBlanc. Um, yeah, it, it was a pretty cool arcade. So, uh, to wrap up the thought of the licensed game, uh, I think it's probably a tie between Tron and actually Popeye, because uh, those both came out in 82. Uh, there right, was also a... the Robin Williams movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, and there was also a... Uh, well, so that came out in, in Japan, and then... Uh, uh, yeah, Donut was said... Uh, Donut also said Popeye. Yeah, uh, but then uh, the other thing, too, is that Taito made a game called Jungle King, which uh, they got sued by Edgar Rice Burroughs' estate because of Tarzan. So technically, that could be the first one. It's just not licensed. <laughs> oh, jeez. Although I guess you'd have to go back to Donkey Kong, because Donkey Kong was obviously, uh, very obviously King Kong. <laughs> Anyways, Well, sorry. I mean, there's, there's that rather famous story involving uh, Universal and uh, Nintendo's lawyers. Continue. Yes. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, all right. Uh, Callie, anything video game wise you want to talk about otherwise uh, that you've played recently? Uh, uh, like, oh, like like I said, I uh, I just drove down the street uh, because there was a uh, gibble. Uh, I didn't have a gibble yet. A what? Um, a, a what? It's a Pokemon. What's a? G- oh. oh. <laughs> all right. So I was a like, gibble? what the hell's a gibble? What what is I don't even know what that is Pokemon wise. It's a little dragon thing that evolves into Gar Gibble. It evolves into Gabite, which evolves into Garchomp. Oh, okay. It's the Gar first level. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes more sense. I I didn't have. They're pretty rare, honestly. Anyway. I I've never seen one. Neither That's how are. rare they are. That's how rare they are. Uh, did you do anything with uh? Uh, Team Rocket today. I, I'm assuming that's going to be a, uh, a recurring thing. Like yeah. they're going to do that every couple of months, or, or like they'll do it every month. They'll have like a day where like Team Rocket takes over or something. Well, no. Uh, well, it already started more or less, but like a uh, basically it. Yeah, the thing today was like, hey, all the stops were Team Rocket stops for uh, three hours, but oh. it only seemed to last like an hour and a half. I don't know what was going on, but uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, like, when, do you guys know what the Team Rocket thing is? Like, how, how much have you played lately? Of Go? Yeah. Um, basically, I turned it on today and then realized that I was nowhere, nowhere near a Pokestop. Uh, I did load up when they had the new, the Dratini thing that came out. That was like a week or two ago, right? Oh, yeah, the, the Jumpstart thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I logged on for that, but I haven't really logged on otherwise. It's just been just been kind of busy, unfortunately. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I've it, hit a few stops, but I don't really have much time, unfortunately. It's just like you get to battle a Team Rocket grunt, and then when you beat them, you get to catch a random Shadow Pokemon that they have, and like, oh, and then like they're they're all glowy with evil energy and red eyes and shit, and then uh. Basically, you purify them, and they might have a. They'll ha- basically get a tiny stat boost. Basically, that's all it is. It's like. Well, it's it says stat boost. It says they're they're cheaper to level up, and that they have a special attack. But what's the benefit of leaving them unpurified, though? Because I've seen some people just leave them like that. Because they want their glowy red eye Pokemon. That's what. That's oh. what that is. <laughs> mm. so um. Cool. I see. It, it's yeah. Uh, they're I don't know. It's dumb. It's like they're shadow Pokemon. That's that's it. Like they're just they have the red eyes, and there's only like t- ten or twelve of them that have the ability to be shadow Pokemon right now. Mm. Um, I have a lot of shadow Rotatas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. I have like four Squirtle and three Bulbasaur now. Like I, the best oh, one I have. Bulbasaur. The best one I have right now is a Golbat. And I'm like, all right, I I can, I think you can evolve them, but you can't power them up, and you can't trade them. Uh, oh, so you you have to purify them to, in order to actually use them properly. Yes. 
Ah, alright. Interesting. And, uh, I... I uh, briefly went to Singapore to play Pokemon Masters, uh, as far as they're oh, concerned. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the error must have killed you. Yeah, no, it was totally worth it, though. Um, you got keen, though. <laughs> so, I, it was the whole thing. Pokemon Masters is an interesting game. Uh, hmm. It's a three-on-three. -three. Everybody shares an action bar. Uh, it Basically, like, it's... A trainer and one Pokemon on your team, and you have okay. three people at a time, and basically just like, okay, this is Snivy. It is a Grass type. It is using Grass type moves, and it'll have like X Attack or whatever. And then you know, here's Brock with his Onyx that has Rock Throw and a Potion. You know, mm -hmm. it's just you know, and you build your teams around the types. Okay. And uh, it's got pretty much every gym leader so far, as far as I can see. And uh, there, there's gonna be there's gonna be different versions of the gym leaders. Like there's Brock with Onyx right now, but there will also be Brock with Tyranitar or whatever. Mm. And then Summer Brock. Yeah. And Festival Brock. And then... That's how they're gonna get me. Yeah. Yeah. It's you. You. You've succumbed to the uh, Mobage. I'm in. I'm in there. You're in. Yeah. You're in there. <laughs> and I've been playing a lot of the game you see on stream right now. I've been playing a lot of this. I'm 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 in. <laughs> I'm deep in. Sure. It's it's a good game. Like I haven't I haven't played it too much, but I've done like a level or two. It's it's fun. Yeah, I'm it's it's scratching the card based dungeon crawler itch that was left for me when I Stop playing Hand of Fate. Oh, speaking of which, goddamn, that sucks. The yeah, developer like straight up. Well, they're not. They're not shut down, but they're just not making new games. Well, they said they're in like maintenance mode. You know, that usually means like a skeleton crew. Yeah. Just handling the IP. That's... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, all right, Chibi, what Hello. have you been up to, video game wise, that you can talk about? And that we totally, you and me, cannot talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's not talk uh, about that. Besides thing we can't talk about. Wait. Um, wait. What? Wait, I need... I need. We I can't need... talk about it. No, we you can't talk about it. You have to now. Yeah, what? what you can't do this there, to me. No, there's an NDA. We can't actually oh. talk about yeah. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. So like Kelly's like, I thought I thought this was some super secret club or something and like oh no 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 we would talk about be, it if it was one no of those it's things. not it's not <laughs> no 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 um oh well, besides that uh here here's the storm which is a game I know some people here played but stop playing uh currently has some sort of mecha event where you like complete all these challenges and you end up unlocking a material with like a mecha skin. I finished that, so now I'm pretty much done with that until something else happens. Um, currently playing uh, StarCraft Co-op because I still have commanders to uh, level. They're they're all different and kind of cool, but they kind of cost a bit, so I buy them whenever there's any cheap packs. Um, dealing with my nephew, who wants to start playing big boy games, but I keep reminding him, big, big boy games means having to do math and uh, read reading comprehension. He's like, no, I can play this. I'm like, yeah, what does that say? Uh, uh. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought. He tried, st he, like, earlier. I would have been on it a little earlier, but he was playing Batman Arkham Asylum, mm. which is fine. It tells you everything you need, mostly in text. So I kept asking right. me and asking him, like, no, I'm not going to tell you. I don't know. Beyond that, um, not much. I uh, played a little Rebel Galaxy last night. Practiced a little more Outrun because I still can't beat that guy. And since I can't beat that guy, I can't continue in Yakuza because I won't let myself. Oh. Beyond that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't get the 5 million points yet. So I have to I have to just get better at that game. Otherwise, yeah, progress halted. I think that only yeah. took me one try when I did it back in the day. Oh, Oh, good I did on stream. Oh, I see. I, I'm, I, I'm just not that good. Just, All right. Just give me the controller, damn it. Okay. I would. I would let your remote in and team view that shit, but no. 
course, it have to be 14, because 14 actually lets you do it 60 FPS, even if there is input lag. Um, yes. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I else? actually, I actually attempted. All right. So my full setup, all my consoles are through a switcher into my computer monitor. So whenever I play, my my little cut, my nephew goes, hey, I want to play something on your system. I, I give him like an hour or two every day, and that's it. He goes, all right, fine. So he switches. I switch over the monitor to the Xbox, and he plays on that. And in order to not just have my computer like there doing nothing, going to sleep, I started testing the Steam Link using my uh, 8-bit, though. Mm -hmm. It's working fine. It's like, I, I can play most games, most things. I, I have a good connection, but it's it's neat. I've tried it like to work, where I also have a good connection, and it works fine there, too. Because it's pretty much its own little team viewer. There's only one problem. It, it gives you a prompt when you remote in that goes, hey, would you like to accept input from remote source? I'm remoting in from somewhere else. I'm, oh. I'm not at the computer <laughs> to click right. that prompt to say, yes, please please accept this input. So it kind of defeats the purpose. So I have to team viewer home. <laughs> I have to activate the Steam link. And I got to be there to click yes to accept the input and then disconnect from team viewer. I think there's some way to get around that, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Uh, I'll look for it. It's fine. Um, I've been working on uh, setting up a home server for various reasons. Mm. But, <laughs> bit of a problem. Have you ever run into semaphore time run out? Like, semaphore timeout error? Um... <sighs> I can't say that I have. Okay. Have you done some Googling? <laughs> it's... What, uh... When when you're transferring exceptionally large files, yeah, Windows will sometimes time out the transfer, mm -hmm. and that means it will cancel the cancel the, the file transfer. I have I have a large eight terabit hard drive full of sixteen to thirty gigabit uh, Blu-ray videos and rips. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to back all my stuff up onto my uh, Drobo. Mm -hmm. it, it it keeps it keeps like failing out. So I've, so I've been work, working on that. Up. So I think I actually have had this problem before. Uh huh. Um, but I think it was specifically with a hard drive that was FAT32. All my stuff's NTFS. NTFS. Yeah, yeah, everything's NTFS. It's not that. Um, I'm I'm gonna get a board with a second Ethernet or get a card, and I'll see if that'll let me work around it. But boot I don't into know. Linux. <laughs> yes, I've seen that too. <laughs> but look, every all the software is in Windows. All right. Fair enough, I guess. I mean, I guess I could dual boot and then, you know, or set up a container and use that. We'll I mean, if see. you're doing if you're doing server stuff, you should be on Linux anyway. Yeah, I know. I, I someone asked me to like set up a Linux box like two weeks ago, and I did <laughs> do it on the fly. It was my first deployment. Worked out well. But you know, I get it. I'm I'm mostly joking around. I mean, obviously, you know, you have to, you, you know, you gotta do what you want to do with regards yeah. to that sort of stuff. But um. No, uh, not so much dark. I have been thinking about get using, like setting up a like an own cloud or a next cloud or a sync thing or one of the other That's various programs I keep seeing people doing, and using that for the transfer. It's just I'm I'm just trying to see if I can like work through it in the native Windows environment because I want to avoid like certain issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Um, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right, is that right. video game stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as for me, uh, as most of you saw, I finished off Moonlighter earlier this past week. Surprisingly, it came out of nowhere to finish it. Um, so that was cool. Definitely considering picking up the DLC, although I have quite a bit of stuff. Um, quite a bit of stuff about, so I'm kind of torn on whether or not I should jump into it. I bought it, um, but whether I actually jump into it or not is the question. Uh, I did pick up a bunch of stuff during the Bethesda Stale on Steam. Uh, picked up both Fallout 4 VR and Skyrim VR, so uh, I will not be streaming those though <laughs> anytime soon unfortunately uh, I just don't have a powerful enough computer really to do that yeah. unfortunately uh, otherwise uh, I'm currently climbing the ranks in Super Mario uh, Maker 2 
not in versus mode. I've been doing the endless challenges. Um, how dare you deprive us of VR goofiness? I don't have the computer capable of doing VR goofiness. That's the problem. Um, I would need to upgrade my entire rig at this point because I need uh yeah VR plus need... streaming. Yeah, that's the problem. It's VR plus streaming. That's a problem. My computer can handle VR, no problem. I've never had an issue with that. It's the issue of actually taking the VR and putting it somewhere. <laughs> uh, that part's the problem. So yeah, that's definitely, lot, definitely would love to do that at some point. Hmm? It's a lot of processing. <laughs> yeah, it's you a lot like, of processing power. You need a board with like a really good like built in to handle the streaming. Like even if you did have a really nice video card. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, so been been playing a lot of Super Mario Maker two. It's been quite enjoyable on that front. Uh, I do have Fire Emblem. I need to start playing that. Uh, I am planning on picking up with uh, the good game spoiled this week. We'll get some more golfing in. Did anybody get that reference, by the way? I made that reference as the stream name, but I don't think anybody actually got it. But mm. there's, a quote, there's a quote from the... It's about sometime in the late 1800s that uh, calling golf a good walk spoiled. Ah. <laughs> so... My golf streams being a good game spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. Hidden, hidden lore. Yeah. I'm all about the lore. Um, but other than that, I picked up a lot of games over the last... I picked up so many games over the last like month, it's really dumb. Like Because I picked up, uh, during the days of play sales around E3, I picked up uh, Dad of War and Spooderman. Uh, I have Judgment that I've been meaning to get into further. I played the first like hour and a half of it, and I'm like, man, oh, I should really get back to this. You actually bought it? Yeah, I bought it. Of course I bought it. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't I buy it? It's a Yakuza game. I just didn't <laughs> see anything about it from you, so I didn't know where oh. you got it. Well, it's because I didn't stream it, because I didn't stream it yet. Um, what else? Like, I picked up uh, The World Ends With You on Switch was on sale really cheap on Amazon, like, a couple of weeks back. It was, like, right around Steam, or right around uh, Amazon sale day or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um so I have a lot of fucking games that I need to get around to playing. Do that. Um, yeah, other than that, not a lot. I'm trying to think of anything else gaming-wise. I definitely, uh, like, I strongly suggest if, if you liked anything you saw with, um, um, anything with uh, Moonlighter, I would strongly suggest giving that a playthrough. Through. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, I think there's a lot more to it, even more than what I did out of it. Um, and it's just a good. It's just a solid game. It's actually on Steam on sale on Switch right now. Actually, I was about to say Steam, and then I meant to say Switch. It's on sale on Switch right now. Um. So, uh, let's I guess move on. Um, we'll talk about some games that are coming out this month because right right in the beginning of August here, actually next this week. Um. And sort of the big release this week is Madden 20. Not that obviously most of us would probably be getting it, but it is of note, right? So that's important. It is uh, a video also, game. <laughs> it is a video game. Uh, also coming out, let's see, this month we got uh, the new Age of Wonders uh, expansion, which I'm pretty excited about. Or is it a standalone game? I think it's a standalone game, yeah? Planetfall, yeah. Uh, which is a it's Age of Wonders, but with like sci-fi elements and shit, which is really cool. But is it better than Beyond Earth for Civ? I don't know. Because that was well, Beyond Earth. Beyond Earth of Civ? No. Well, I mean, I'm sure every game would be better than that because everybody hated Beyond Earth. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it probably will be just because the gameplay is completely different. <laughs> um, also coming out this month of note is nothing. Oh. I Astral Chain. Astral Chain comes out. Eh. Not really much else, though. It's kind of a late month, surprisingly. August is usually a busy month, I thought. Um, it, traditionally, yes, but, like, we've we fragmented the release schedule so much that it doesn't matter anymore. I guess that's fair. Like, I'm looking at this list, and I'm like, I don't know most of these games. Like, there's apparently there's a Blair Witch game. Yep. Yeah, there was a that's trailer for that at, uh, on E3. Xbox. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, that's like, um, I legit thought they were remaking Silent Hill 2 or something until it was like, it pulled back and it was the freaking Blair Witch logo. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I do remember that now. Okay. I'm like, ah, uh, um, all right. Sure. Um, the game Rad from uh, Double Fine 
It's actually published by Bandai Namco, which is interesting. Uh, that comes out August 20th. Uh, there's a Yu-Gi-Oh game that comes out in August. Hell yeah. Uh, Life is Strange 2 Episode 4 comes out in August. Yeah, I, I've been waiting until that whole thing is out to go through it. Yeah. Oh, the new um, the new Tokyo RPG Factory game comes out uh, August 22nd, actually. That's the uh, uh, Chrono Trigger director... A directed Chrono Trigger director directed game. Um, that I think they sh they did show off at E3. I think it was in the uh, if I remember correctly. It was in the the uh, Switch the Nintendo presser if I remember correctly. Um, it's the guy that worked on. It looked like I Am Sasuna, and everybody was like, "Oh, it's like I Am Sasuna or Lost Fear. They're bringing it back." It's like, no, it's a brand new game. Uh, I think actually maybe they showed it off at Square. I thought they might have showed it off at the Switch thing, but I think maybe they showed it off at Square. Um, but it should be fun. I mean, the thing, once that's the one thing I think a lot of people actually don't realize, like, this Twitch doesn't have that many JRPGs on it. Like, it has obviously all the Final Fantasies, but everything has all the Final Fantasies. Well, but, like, outside of Octopath. Outside of Octopath and Xenoblade and I'm Setsuna, that's basically it. Those are all gigantic, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know they're all really big. I'm just saying, like, in general. It's definitely like a lot less than pre. Well, maybe not a lot less than the Wii U, but a lot less than most other consoles. Um, yeah, September and October are going to be obviously bigger months, but interesting to see this kind of lull in August. I'm curious if uh, anything comes out of the woodwork randomly. You never know. I'm sure Nintendo Minute will happen in October, or in August, some variety. I'm assuming because it's been. A a month since, uh, yeah, with Astral Chain coming out, I'm sure they're going to do actually a Nintendo Minute probably right near the end of the month just to be like, hey, here's Astral Chain and also here's all this other stuff we're doing. Maybe they'll finally release the SNES Virtual Console stuff. I can't wait for that to be super disappointing. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I know, I can't wait because it's going to be, it is going to be super disappointing because they're going to have like, uh, they're going to have great things like uh, Super Tech Mobile. I don't know. I think I think when they release that, it'll be good because there'll be actually be some good stuff in there. I'm sure it actually it makes sense for them to do that sooner rather than later. With uh, I'm I'm Link's, still Link's Awakening DX coming out. You have Link to the I'm, Past. I'm still that would be a good. With their asses about that. Oh, I am too. I I think Nintendo in general needs to. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Doing it. it's the Nintendo Online thing. That was the that was my point. Is they're gonna add SNES games to it eventually? They have to like. Sure. My 2DS was not powerful enough to run this year. <laughs> yeah, you know, I couldn't handle. Yeah. What the hell? Uh, Seriously. Oh man. All right. Uh, so that is the news. I'm not actually talking about the news, but um, what do we all want to talk about? I got oh. one thing I wanted to talk about, but. I could go first, but I wanted to see if anybody else wanted to go, had a uh, no, any no, sort no. of want to go first. Okay. So, who wants to talk about requiring a Bethesda account? Oh, I would like to meme. talk about that because I I kind of run a follow that. Uh, you need, to, you need but, well, you require a Bethesda account to continue conversation. Oh, okay. Then I I can't. Then I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> so, did did you not hear about this, Callie? No, I, I'm saying it's a good meme. It's a good... Oh, it is a good meme. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it definitely gave some amazing memes on the tw on the, uh, on the Twitter net. Um, yeah, so Doom... Classic Doom releases were announced on Friday during DoomCon... Not DoomCon, QuakeCon. Well, they called, well, they called it DoomCon. Did they call it no, DoomCon like, this year? Yeah, they straight up call it DoomCon. Like, I mean, we uh, need... I, the reveal of E3, I said, yeah, we're just branding at that this time around. Yeah, I, I I really wish that Quake would come back with a vengeance because I miss my Quake. Anyways, um, uh, say hello to uh, Quake Two RTX. That's <laughs> yeah, the Quake yeah right. that's your Quake. That's all the Quake I'm getting this year and next year. Um, yeah, so fucking Doom comes out on Friday. Uh, accidentally, you needed a Bethesda account. Well, so you needed a Bethesda account to. Uh, be included into the Slayers Club, which is the uh, Doom like uh, social club or whatever. Social, yeah, it's like Doom Social Club. 
<laughs> Rockstar's Rockstar Social Club's Doom Social Club. Um, so yeah, so they've, there's a great pop up that says unable to access online features without uh, uh, without a Bethesda account <laughs> for Doom one and two and three. Um, but yeah, so hysterical considering the games are older than most probably most people who downloaded it to play it. Yeah. I mean, how many I mean, how many times have you bought Doom? How many times have have, have, have people on here uh, in this the three of us? How many times have you bought Doom? Not counting bought, Doom RPG. Not counting Doom RPG. Okay. A, a handful, I'll say that. I I'd say I've probably bought it about th- Three, maybe four times. I know about on the 360 when they did the 360 um, classic 360 arcade the, release. The, yeah, the arcade. Yeah, the, yeah on the, the arcade. Look, and I know I'm. Good. Like, like Venom said, Venom mentioned this earlier because I was still asleep at the time we were having the conversation. <laughs> you can't, you can't say how could they mess this up in a world where Ubisoft got Tetris wrong. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, Tetris um, is a simple, simple ass game. Very few mechanics. It's it's all in like the gameplay and speed up, and yeah, it just it, it lagged. There was input problems. There was all kinds of just issues. Yeah. Anything else is like fair game at this point. Yeah, I I mean to be fair, I think I think this was one of those. Uh, this was one of those things that they should have caught in bug testing, but they didn't. Um, because I, I think in reality, in reality, like as they explained it, oh, you know, it was only supposed to be specifically for the Slayers Club. You shouldn't have done this. Like it should have been optional. Yeah. But it's just, it's the thing is, is like obviously everybody's gonna pile on to fucking Bethesda with all the shit that they pulled in the last six months. Mm-hmm. So obviously, it's gonna become a big deal yeah. when the spotlight is on them. So I, overall, like I think it's not offensive personally but i think it's hysterical and we're for some amazing memes to come up like can, i think most can people I tell can you what i think at least that point can't tell you what yeah. i think what kelly no, Kelly. can't tell you what i think sure yes. please what i think happened is that this went off exactly as they planned i think that's what happened you think that they intended for it to do this yes okay I think I mean they want people in their ecosystem much like an okay. epic or a whatever and uh I think this went off exactly as planned and the anger went off exactly as planned and uh that's what I think. Okay. I mean I think I think I could see it both ways. I just personally am more to I follow the classic code of don't attribute to Maliciousness, whatever, can equally be distributed to stupidity. Right. And I think this is more on the stupidity side, but um, I could definitely see, like, I could see it being legitimate, and they just kind of let the out for what happened, and they're like, "Oh no, we meant to do it the right way." Um, but I don't know. I think it's one of those things where it does seem, it, it seems like it got blew, like, blew up a lot more than it potentially should have. Also, to be fair, I, to be fair to your credit, I didn't even know they released the Doom on the Switch until all these memes popped up. <laughs> so, I guess it did work <laughs> to get some notoriety on all of the uh, all, all of, like the channels that I follow. So, I guess that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's all I had on that. Um, Chibi, what you got? What you want to talk about? Silence. I think he disappeared. He, he might have disappeared. That's okay. Um, Callie. Oh, ooh, he, ooh, he hard disappeared. Oh, cool. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, Callie, do you have anything you want to talk about? Uh, I, it's, I, I had some interesting. I ran into a friend when I was at the Classic Game Fest yesterday, and we were just, mm. we went and got pizza, and we were just talking about like. Uh, there's there's this I, I don't know I getting old sucks that's that's what I'm trying to get I across can agree, I can agree with that it like being there with Surge and just like man Marvel vs. Capcom 2 really was before your time huh 
and like <laughs> just these hard realizations of just like it you know it it this goes back to the same bitching and just like oh man metallica is on the classic rock station except now it's like <laughs> how long ago was marvel capcom 2 oh oh, oh. Yeah, that's fair. You don't really, you don't, you wouldn't know about any of this, would you? That's, this, it's just, that, that's, that's part of why I want to take Surge to these, like, classic game fests. Just like, no, you should know what this is. You should know, right? you know, what an Atari paddle feels like and how bad it is, you know, yeah. to, to control. Feel the dreamcast buttons cutting into your tender young flesh. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> D-pad, trying to play fighting <laughs> games on that D-pad blistered me up real good no we, we we paid for those those uh the, those fight sticks like real quick oh hell yeah um no that's fair um actually it's funny that you mentioned that i was just uh like i don't know i'm assuming most people know at this point but i recently got back into golf like yeah, physical golf like actually going out um and so first of all obviously i so 10 years ago when i last really played because i last played about about 12 years ago almost now uh, back when I was in my first college I played because we had like a course that was uh, attached to the college so I could basically go really cheaply and play when I was a college student and it was great it was like five dollars for to play nine holes like that's amazing uh, but so I suck um, but it reminded me that today actually one of the PGA tour events this dude who just got out of college won his first PGA tour event at the age of 22 and I was like fuck that I am Jeez. I, I feel old. <laughs> I feel really old now. <laughs> yeah, no. Because I remember growing up watching Tiger win a bunch, and Tiger was older than me by a little bit. He's like 43, so he's 10 years older, 12 years older than me. Yeah, but no. it's just like, man, seeing like young kids, younger people, because kids isn't necessarily fair, but he is almost 10 years younger. Like, seeing them win an event and over people that are like almost double their age is pretty 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 terrible feels yeah, bad man but would you have won that open if you were his age i mean uh no okay then maybe. yeah don't i don't know maybe about but, it. <laughs> okay maybe, maybe you know maybe if my parents pushed me a little bit harder to get to keep playing because i played when i was younger and all that uh, i doubt it i'm so, saying, I can... like if if you're not competing on that level you know don't feel bad about it that's their that's their life that's their skill yeah. you know no, I know, and and you know, I do remind myself every time I go out to the course. It's like it doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter how shitty I am. It's I'm just having a, going out there to have a good time in nature. Like it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but I do want to get better, so. No, I'm dude. Going out more often. Ju just today, uh, a 16-year-old won a Fortnite tournament and won three yep. million dollars. Yep. Three million dollar Fortnite tournament winner. It's yeah. insane. It. And we were actually. It's funny because we were just talking about in games chat earlier earlier today me and rec were talking about or we had a group we were talking about esports in general uh and i was talking about man i remember back in the day when i used to play counter-strike 1.6 on cal and this is in like 2005 and there is like what nothing <laughs> just the weird and, but... fragmentization of counter-strike like the one yeah before, well the beta the well i mean the thing is like 1.5 was when competitive play really started becoming yeah. a thing with actual money involved and 1.6 was the last version of the original counter-strike that's ever been made like they've never gone back to it oh well they have gone back to it to add like steam more support and shit but um but yeah like you know 1.6 was the shit and it was the game it was the esports game outside of korea basically outside of starcraft in korea um and it's the reason why counter-strike csgo is still one of the largest esports games because the community has young and old get into that game so uh but anyways i'm enough of my ranting about esports and before they were cool esport things <laughs> hmm. chibi before you disappeared i was asking you what you had to bring conversation wise to the table this week what do you want to talk about well it kind of goes on to the back of the bethesda thing hmm. because I attempt, like, as I usually do, I see games that are coming out. I go, you know what? I'll just jump on the deluxe version. I don't want to deal with, like, picking up pieces of DLC or, like, the season pass was cheaper before it came out, so I should have just gotten it then and all that, so. Makes sense. I went to Green Man Gaming. I threw, um, 
Wolfenstein Youngblood Deluxe and Doom Eternal Deluxe into my cart, and I bought mm-hmm. them. And I sat down for like a few seconds, realizing so- something just feels off for some reason. I went and I checked the email, the the confirmation email that comes. Yeah. And I looked, and I saw these were Bethesda Net keys I had just bought. Oh. Uh... There, there are no discount or deals available for non Bethesda Net versions. Mm. It's either I, it's either I pay up the full price for Steam, or I pirate, or <laughs> I I like I eat it and just join the net. And I currently have a hundred bucks just sitting on my GMG. Nah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get into more things. I'm fine as is. I'm okay. No, I understand what you mean. Um, the the launcher situation. We've we talked about the launcher situation yeah. in the previous season of the podcast. Um, and I mean, you know, people still are all yelling up and down about it, and people calling other people names over the internet over. It. And it's like, you know, it's the same thing with just for uh, preference, man. I just... Yeah, like at the end of the day, like I just don't want to have all that. Yeah. Like. Why should I be forced to when, like, and, and that's, this is the problem with a lot of things in digital formats at the moment. So I'm not, I'm not too surprised. Like, I'm, I feel you. I feel the pain because it's, I feel very similar. Yeah. Um, like, I definitely uh, would like to pick up, um, you know, Ghost Recon. And I don't know what platform I'm going to pick it up on now. Like, I don't know if I, like, because on Steam, obviously, I don't actually, is it even, I don't even think it's available on Steam. I'm going to have to bite off a of Uplay. I, and, and, Anything that's come out recently, um, like uh, the division, I just get on UPlay. It's it's the easier of the two, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks like it's not even it's not even available on uh, Epic. It is not available on Steam, so you'll have to. Oh. I do have to buy it directly off of UPlay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I've already bought a bunch of stuff on UPlay at this point, so it's one of those yeah. things where I'm kind of like, I've already had UPlay installed. They've had to have it installed for games. So. It's not the end of the world, but... No. But you can see it from here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, no, I feel you on that. Um, did we want to talk about the GTA Casino? I want to talk about the GTA Casino. No. Or, uh, what's the uh, deal? I don't know. So, uh, so when Grand Theft Auto first, five first came out, right? Uh, there was a casino. And everybody's like, oh man, why, why didn't they open... In the casino like it could have been really cool you know especially in a game about heists you would oh, think like a it casino was, it was on the map it was there you yeah can go in okay. yeah you could physically go there um and in fact there was actually a couple of races uh around the racetrack because there's a racetrack there's like a horse racetrack yeah. um, but in general the place is basically not there it's basically abandoned uh essentially uh and they basically I even think they mention it briefly in some of the lore of the game in the beginning where it's just like oh yeah the casino's closed uh uh, but that was it. That was just the hand wave of the casino's closed. Is it, um, is it one of the same ones you knocked over in San Andreas? Or no? No, 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 no. Because the, the ones in San Andreas were in Los Venturas, which is technically uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, this was actually just on the uh, east side of Los Santos. Like, it's on the northeast corner of Los Santos. Uh, if you go up the highway towards uh, Hickville, I forget what the... the <laughs> yeah. I forget what the, the desert land is is um but anyways if you go up there just just a little north of where you get onto it to get to uh, from that uh, from los santos that direction uh you'll see it on the highway on the right hand side um and so for the longest time it's been closed and people are like oh man they should open it well they did this past weekend um and guess what it's exactly what you think it is so of course you can buy shark cards you know so microtransactions for in-game currency and then you Use the shark card money. Use that money in the casino, but it's GTA. You can't get the money. There's no way to get the money out of the casino. There's no trading in the game. Once you buy an item, it's for your character. You can't do anything with it. That's kind of um, weird because okay, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Five, Grand Theft Auto Online, rampant cheating. Like, oh Like yes. a mofo, left and right. Yep. The thing is, what people would do is like the shark cards. That's money that goes to your account yeah like you get stuff added for character or whatever but it's on your account what mm-hmm. people would do is buy a shark buy a shark card or two mm-hmm. and basically cheat like a mofo because what they do is they delete your character 
but mm -hmm. the purchase stays on your account. So you've got right. the seed money to go out and be a scumbag like immediately. But how's that going to work now? I mean, is that money just like straight up gone when you use it or what's the deal? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, honestly, not sure to tell you the truth. They did actually just, um, uh, Eurogamer actually did a pretty good opinion piece about it. Uh, basically, the title actually is exactly what I think most people should describe it as. GTA's Casino isn't the worst of gambling in games, but it puts it into perspective. Yeah, I like like we were talking about earlier, it's apparently already banned in multiple countries due to gambling laws for some reason. Yeah. Well, because you're, yeah, you're, it's fake There's money There's no way to get gambling. it out, but it's, it's gambling online. It's, yep. it's going for the rush. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got all the stuff that you consider a traditional casino. It's got, you know, blackjack and uh, slot machines and roulette and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you can buy stuff in it to make your character cool. Um, but it's very, yeah, it's 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 one of those things where, but very similarly to, uh, similarly and dissimilarly to like a FIFA, because the thing with FIFA, you could technically trade the characters, right? You can trade a character, you can trade a card to somebody over FIFA. Oh, I know um, that. Yeah, you can. You can you can trade them. Well, at least you used to be able to. I don't know if you can in nineteen. I haven't I haven't played FIFA nineteen. I remember back in it's still 12, there. 12, 10? 10 or twelve when they first started doing Ultimate Team, uh, you could totally trade a card to another person. Or, uh, or you could put a trade up and then have somebody bid on said trade with the uh, in-game currency, the uh, FIFA coins or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then you could like arrange for that to happen to give you money via that. Like people have done it technically, like buy the TOS, but people have done it. Similar to like buying WoW gold before they sold started selling WoW gold or uh, Eve currency before they started selling Plexes, that sort of thing. Um. But yeah, it's it's kind of funny that it's like, hey, it's like literally fucking gambling. <laughs> like we literally put gambling in this game, and they, I mean, to be fair, they had gambling in Red uh, Dead. Red Dead. But you had to buy DLC to get it. It wasn't just in the main game. Uh, multiplayer, no, it was, I mean, a multiplayer was it? Multiplayer, no, multiplayer. They had it, but it only came in with one of the, the Liars and Cheats DLC. I think actually let you go to places on the map and play games because my friends oh, and I did not know that. Used, what we used to do was basically we'd we'd like we'd all get home after working like the full day, yeah, and just like say, all right, we're meeting we're meeting uh, like near Rathskeller uh, Fork, or we're going to this place, and we just like play cards and dice and whatever, and just you know fuck around for a night around the table. Yeah. The in the table. old in the old yeah, Red Dead, West, which means you can go outside and just shoot some dudes or you know tie some yeah. tracks, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. mostly just a hangout. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 just interesting. I, I I'm 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 not obviously there's no way that they could ever let people take money out of Grand Theft Auto because they make too much money with it. But mm -hmm. um, I did think it was kind of funny to see that like oh finally they released the casino. It's like ah oh, that's that's cute. <laughs> I'm curious if anybody has anything to say about this. And surprisingly, I mean outside of the the couple of bands that apparently have happened, it really hasn't really hasn't gotten that much news. Surprisingly, is there? Okay, so like many video games, you can spend real money on it, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't get anything out, right? Yep. That's a lot Besides of... Besides looking cool. Why... <laughs> Dope as fuck. Like, how is this different from every other video game right now? <laughs> it's... It's not. That's... I mean, it's definitely not, I think. That's what monetization is. It's just... Getting people to spend after they bought the game. Right. This is just a different type. I, I, I just... Why are people getting mad about this one? When this is just... Un, it, it's microtransactions. Like, it's... It's it's spending real money for fake gold like every single other video game right now. I don't, I don't understand. Are people just getting mad because it's GTA? Like... Or because it's an, an actual... I mean, it's it's like yeah, it's like literally a casino. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny because it's, it's we have, just literally a casino in Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but we have like a million like slot machine apps that people can spend money on. You know? Oh like, yeah. yeah, I think they're, they're all, pretty shitty too. They're all pretty terrible. My dad wanted <laughs> I, like, like a slot machine app for his phone, and they were all like full of ads and crap. I yep. couldn't find like one that was just. Oh yeah, no, they 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 have like Konami. 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 Uh, Konami has a. Health clubs. 
Yes, uh, Konami actually has a slot machine. Um, they actually have a slot machine, like, mobile game. Uh, and it connects, if you go to, like, Vegas, it's all over the fucking place because it connects to all the loyalty programs for the fucking casinos. Yeah, sweet. Um, so, it like it's, like, even funnier because it's, like, a actual link into the fucking gambling world. Um, so it's insane. Uh, and, they're, like, they're all about, like, oh, yeah, you know, you could play... Uh, the NGM slots app and get real world benefits out of it because you get like if you sign up with their loyalty programs, you could sign up your loyalty program onto the uh, onto the app and then proceed to earn comps and stuff by playing online. But basically, you're just basically all you're doing is you have to spend the microtransaction currency. You have to pay hundred dollars to get the in-game currency and then play on the slot machines with that and shit, which is dumb. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean that shit happens. Like it's it's I, I I don't disagree with what you're saying. But like it's the same as everything else is going on right now. But like, is that okay? Um, no, none of it's okay. It's just I don't see how it's any different than anything else going on right now. And it's no, not. It's just tied to the fact that it's a casino. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Because it's yeah, just funny. No, there's also it's... a million video games with fake casinos. You know. That's yeah, of course. Thing. I've played Yakuza. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, I completely agree. Um, I mean, one of the main differences, obviously, is the online variant of it. Uh, and also, the user games have never had a microtransaction currency where you can buy, like, in-game currency yeah. via money. Because the games aren't about that. The games are about the story. Yeah. Um, so, now, right. I, I, I agree 100% that it's not anything special, but it's interesting in the current political comment, uh, com climate of microtransaction that. discussions... <laughs> political climate of, of microtransaction discussions of video games that we all of a sudden like one of the games comes out and just has it's like fuck it let's not be overt with this shit here's a fucking casino instead of playing this like here's a pack of cards maybe there's a good card in it even though we have like a point zero 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 three percent chance of getting like a good player in a fucking fifa pack even though you're spending real world money on it right um getting old sucks <laughs> The video games suck now, because they're all microtransaction laden. Remember mm -hmm. back in the day when you used to cheat code in GTA? Back in my day. Back in my day. Oh my god, actually... I finally beat the second boss. Oh my god. Sorry. Congrats. No, it's good. Better than... Speaking of which, um... Oh, going back to Bethesda. The, apparently, Youngblood's got a ton of microtransactions. But apparently, ah. it, it's totally, it's a... uh... What's it called? Um, cheat engineable. <laughs> oh yeah, they didn't. They Great. didn't put in a lockout. They didn't like code against it. So yeah, just give yourself whatever you need. Welcome. But be careful. They might ban your Bethesda.net account that you're required to log into <laughs> to Doom on your Switch. Oh no, I can never. Play oh Mario no. Game. I'm actually thinking about going back to what I was talking about. I'm actually thinking about it because I saw um, watching a San Andreas speed run on ESA. I was actually thinking about going back to play through the Grand Theft Auto games because I haven't played them in forever. Like in order? Um, yeah. I mean, the first right. three are kind of rough. Yeah, like London, <laughs> London, and one, London, and two are pretty rough. Um, just because they're, you know, they're these open world games at a time where open world design wasn't really a thing and actually kind of difficult if you haven't played them. Oh yeah, I hated the save system because. I always had to like earn a certain amount of cash in order to save. I couldn't just like play for a little bit, and that's it. Yeah. I also don't know if uh, I don't know if the PC ones even play on Windows 10. <laughs> they do. I did it recently. Oh, do they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? I do have a giant backlog of games that I should probably try to get. What should I play through next? That's what I should figure out. I should try to figure out what I should play through next on stream. Hey. You said you I had played? GTA 5 on PC, right? I do. You want to just visit the casino, see what's up? <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Yeah, why not? Get some of that good old investigative journalism going. <laughs> yes, investigative journalism. Journalism. Uh, Quote-unquote journalism. Do I actually... I don't even know if I have it installed at the moment. Well, I, I don't, but I'm going to... I, I do have it installed. Do you have have you beat have you gotten far enough that you actually can do the online stuff? Uh, yeah, I started the online. I did one session just to see what what Okay. 
So we we totally can go. Okay. I I'd be down to do that. Yeah, I'd um, do this. But we can I think uh I think we're at a point here where we could probably stop the podcast for the week, I think. Yeah. Oh. Anybody that... if anybody else has anything to add. Eh. I mean, you know, we're we're trying things out. We're trying to see what's up. Be another yeah, mission I... in StarCraft. Yeah. <laughs> Be another mission in StarCraft. <laughs> Command mode uh... only. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. So yeah, so let's let's wrap up the podcast for this week then. Uh, one of the and I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I think this has been a good format change. I think having more of an open discussion about things people actually care about, I think, is better. Yeah, I got a nice yeah, solid maybe, hour. Maybe yeah. we need to be a little little less wary about like getting into it. Like if it goes long, it goes long in terms of like talking about stuff. But yeah. Thanks. Oh uh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Thanks, like, Jay and this this will probably let us like engage with the uh, with the ch active chat a little more because I know, like in the past, I've tried to like call out stuff where people are talking or like bring up points, but sometimes we just like run over each other. Yeah. And like we don't we don't actually get to listen to like what people are saying in response to what we're doing and stuff. So. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, so I guess uh, we'll figure out what sort of regular schedule we want to have this on, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, but yeah, so I want to thank Chibi and Callie for being on here tonight. Uh, thank You're you guys welcome. for being on. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be, trying to be yeah. courteous. Yeah. Keep uh, trying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. Uh, uh, you didn't. Uh, right on. All right. Well, then I want to thank everybody for watching this evening, and uh, we'll see you all next time on the VGC podcast. Bye, guys. Bye.